Comparing the bones of Falcarius to other animals is the first step in a lengthy investigation. Every bone is carefully examined for clues. Within the fossils of this primitive therizinosaur, the transition from predator to plant eater is waiting to be found. Bone by bone, Falcarius reveals its precious secrets. Some of the answers to the mystery surrounding Falcarius can be found in the time it was living. During the early Cretaceous era, temperatures were rising and so were sea levels. It was a period of remarkable change. It wasn't until the early Cretaceous that one group of carnivores evolved to be probably, as far as we can tell today, herbivores. Falcarius, though, is a true missing link. Here we have an animal that allows us to tell the story of how we went from a velociraptor-type predator to something that was a large-bodied, full-blown plant eater. Now, another interesting thing is going on in the world at this time. Flowering plants are appearing for the first time and really starting to take over. And it may be that this spread of these new plants helped to lead to the evolution of Falcarius, this predator turned herbivore. The discovery of Falcarius provides a unique opportunity to see what features this early Therizinosaur preserved from its meat-eating ancestors. So how do we know that Therizinosaurs evolved from raptor-like dinosaurs? When we find an animal that's primitive like Falcarius, we're able to look at, at its anatomy and see things that have been retained from its ancestors. For instance, in the case of Falcarius, which represents early Therizinosaurs, we're still able to see predatory features like sharp claws. In the case of um, raptor dinosaurs folding arms, this is the forelimb of Falcarius. One of the things that's easy to recognize about it is that it basically looks like a raptor dinosaur. It's long, it's elongate, the bones are not thick and robust. The claws are still predatory dinosaur claws. There hasn't been that much change in the forelimb. When we look at the legs of this animal, one of the really significant features we see with Falcarius is the lower leg bones are significantly longer than the upper leg bones. These are features we see in running animals. It's a real character of all the Manoraptorans, Velociraptor, the Oviraptors. The sharp claws, long forelimbs, and fast running capabilities all trace back to the raptor roots of Falcarius. All later Therizinosaurs that we know of have femurs that are, sh long are longer than the lower legs. This is a sign of an animal that's moving much more slowly. In addition, this animal still has a pretty typical theropod three-toed foot with three functional toes, but the little dew claw here in later therizinosaurs becomes larger and actually becomes a weight-supporting toe once again. What makes Falcarius unique in the fossil world is that now, for the first time, scientists have a missing link, a step in the evolutionary transformation from a predatory raptor to a plant-eating therizinosaur. One of the things we know you have to do to build a Therizinosaur is to take a Velociraptor-like animal and give it a huge gut and shrink its legs down, add a couple extra toes, long, and lengthen its neck and shrink its head and give it small leaf-shaped teeth instead of those sharp blade-like teeth like a predatory dinosaur would have. Previously, we had no real information on how this transition was happening. With the discovery of Falcarius, we're able to take an in-depth look, sort of a time slice in evolution, and take a close look at what areas of the skeleton are changing. When we look at the hip region here, we see some features that are very important in the therizinosaurs that are, are developed much more so later. They begin to flare the hip out laterally, pull the bones at the base of the hips back, basically creating a large basket to support the digestive system that a plant-eating animal needs. And this has already begun to do this, and there's really not much reason you would start expanding your abdominal cavity unless you were going to process something that was more difficult to digest. In a unique twist of evolution, Falcarius represents a meat-eater forsaking its bloodthirsty ancestry as it becomes a vegetarian. Well, if we take a look at this, meat-eating dinosaur that would have been a close relative of Falcarius, you can see it has sharp blade-like teeth that would be serrated like a knife. If we look at the teeth of Falcarius, 
You notice they're smaller, more densely packed. They're not serrated the same way that the meat-eating teeth were, and they're leaf-shaped, so they're much better suited for eating plants. The enlarged gut and smaller teeth were directly related to the change in diet that occurred with Falcarius. Other more subtle changes were just beginning. And then as a really exciting feature, we see this specialized elongate neck. Now, as you look at this neck, it looks heavy, but the bones are full of air sacs, and really none of the bone in this neck is more than two millimeters thick. If you filled the, the dry neck bones with helium, they'd probably float. Now, for Falcarius, we had hundreds, thousands of bones all mixed up in the quarry. And when we describe an animal, we have to pick one bone to make the type specimen, to define the species on. And for the case of Falcarius, we picked a bone that had lots of different features to it. You want something that has a lot of parts you can describe. And for this purpose, we used the brain case. Now, the very distinctive feature for Falcarius that we don't see in any other dinosaur are these very large excavations all around the base of the brain case that actually overlap smaller little excavations. This is where air sacs, such as we see around the brain case of birds, are coming in and surrounding this part of the skull. This might have been used for cooling, it might have been for lightening the head. We don't know why in this particular animal, but they're very distinctive. These air sacs weren't the only feature Falcarius had in common with birds. It probably had feathers. Modern evidence shows that small predatory dinosaurs and modern birds have over 100 similar bony features. Dramatic evidence was provided with the 1995 discovery of a dinosaur ecosystem in Liaoning, China. This site, which was buried by volcanic ash, contains many pristine fossils with primitive feathers. One of the other bizarre features of therizinosaurs is they were probably covered in feathers. Not the flight-like feathers that you think of in modern birds, but the more downy feathers that you think of sort of keeping a duck warm, sort of what we call proto-feathers. We know this because the ancestors of therizinosaurs were feathered, and we know many of their descendants were. We also have a feathered therizinosaur that's from China where they have a dramatic assemblage of feathered dinosaurs in a really remarkably preserved ecosystem. Feathers, although you might think evolved specifically for flight, obviously are serving other purposes in feathered dinosaurs. Because we have such a vast diversity of feathered dinosaurs, it leads us to the question, what other purposes are feathers evolved for? Some of the things that come to mind are color, camouflage for attracting mates, possibly for thermoregulation or staying warm. In addition to looking at the specific changes going on with Falcarius's skeleton, understanding what other animals it lived with helps complete the picture of its environment. Of the more than a thousand bones cataloged so far from the Crystal Geyser Quarry, more than 99% of them pertain to Falcarius, our new dinosaur. But we do have a few bones that are tantalizing uh, in terms of telling us a little more about the environment. One of these is this large bone right here. This is the neck bone of a brachiosaur, one of the very large long neck dinosaurs that we think of in the golden age of dinosaurs of Jurassic Park. But they extended up into the Cretaceous and lived with Falcarius at this site. Uh, we also have a smaller vertebra backbone of an armored dinosaur, still very large for the kind of animal it belongs to. The armored dinosaurs, the ankylosaurs, were very abundant. The small number of other dinosaurs also might suggest something unusual is going on at this dinosaur graveyard. The site is almost exclusively falcarious, and there is evidence of several mass die-offs. Why are these animals grouped together here, and what killed them?